Hey guys, welcome to the crash course on the new responsive engine. What is the responsive engine? It's a new way to build responsive layouts in Bubble using different controls that Bubble has given us, such as row, column, and line to parent. So why we're going to this direction is because in the old way, we have been using this fixed layout in a fixed canvas. So essentially what that has allowed us to do is when we position elements into our canvas, in this case, this container is fixed. We we'll position elements to our canvas. We're able to control where in the canvas we're able to position our elements. So in this case, I'm creating three different containers. So I'm able to specify where our these containers are being laid out. So in this case, I might be able to put this in the middle, this on the right. Now, when we look in preview mode, we're able to see those elements position them exactly where we want. However, if we make our width a little bit smaller, these are not going to go and behave the way it should be behaving on a, on a smaller screen, which is uh, pushing these elements uh, down. So if we go and just look at a preview, it won't do anything because again, we have specified it where we want to position the elements in this fixed campus. However, in the new responsive engine, if we build this responsibly, we should be able to easily push these elements down. So before I go and dive deeply into each specific container layout, let me go and give you a glimpse of how I visualize an existing app and how we'll build that in bubble by visualizing them in blocks. All right. So let's take a look at a very popular app, which is YouTube. Here you're going to see a lot of different elements inside the page. A lot, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So the way I visualize it is I like to think of containers. So if we focus on the top part, we can really see we have a header container on the left side. We'll have a left container for all these many items. And in the middle, we have a big container to hold all these videos. Now inside those containers, we also have two ch children containers. So if you focus again on the top part, we have a container that can probably hold these two items, another container that can hold this search and this icon, another container that can hold this icons and this profile icon. Same thing for this left side and same thing for this right side. Now, how those containers are selected is based on how they're being laid out. So in the top part, we have a container that is row container because it's going from left to right. I think of rows, I think of left, I think of columns, I think of top to bottom. So on the top part will be a row container. In the left part will be a column container. And inside over here, it will be a column container because we have here different categories and we'll have on the bottom part, the video container, category container and a video container. So that's the way I visualize it. And that's the way I would, if I was tasked to build this app in bubble and make it responsive, that's how I would visualize it. Okay. So I'm going to talk about each specific container layout. I'll start with row. So inside of canvas right now we have selected as fits, but if I go to row, you will notice the elements being pushed from a big position from left to right. So as you can see, they're kind of sort of meshed together, but they're now from left to right. And now we have no way to position them wherever we want. And that is exactly what we want in a responsive page. We, we don't want to be selecting where we're positioning elements. We want to let bubble and a new responsive engine align our elements wherever it thinks it is fit. So in this case, it's row. It's going to position themselves from left to right. Now, the great thing about this is that if I go to the preview mode, they're going to go and push themselves to the bottom. So this is great for a responsive page that you where you don't want the elements to be cut off in a fixed layout. So now I'm going to go and make our canvas a column. Same concept, instead of from being from left to right, now it's from top to bottom. As you can see right here, top to bottom. So also we have another container layout where it's a line to parent. So if I unselect this, go select like the parent. Now the element in that lives inside this container layout, in this case, con the elected like parent container is the whole canvas by one of his children is this group. With this layout, we're able to position them wherever we want inside the canvas like this. This is great if you want to position a specific element in a very specific spot. Usually I use it in card components where we have a sort of a favorite icon on the top right and we use something like this.
So let's talk about other features of the new responsive engine. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select row for this container. And you're going to see new properties up here. So if we focus here in the middle, we have this property called fix width. We don't want in this new responsive world, we don't want nothing to be fixed anymore. So if we unselect this, you're going to see now the container take as much space as you can for the width. We can do the same behavior for the height. If we go more towards the bottom, we can select this and now it's going to take the whole height. My great thing about this is because let's say you're building this YouTube app and you have different videos inside this container. And let's say we're tasked to build this container, this main container inside that holds all these videos. So if we go back to the bubble app, if we just put some groups to kind of serve as our videos, if we have this selected as fixed width, it will, we will be playing around with this fixed width until something works for us. And we don't want this. We don't want to be fiddling with this width. We just want, you know, Hey, you, uh, the new responsive engine, you will go ahead and try to figure out how, how big the canvas is. So we have to select this for the fit height to content. Typically I do select this, but I do select this sort of at the end. So, because if I'm working on my canvas right now, I do, um, want to have as much space as I can. Uh, so, and then once I'm done, I will select fit height to content. And in this case, it's going to just try to collapse itself until it finds the first element and whichever the element is the highest, it's going to try to collapse itself into that. So again, going with a YouTube example, let's say I have this unselected for now. Let me create a few more videos. And just to visualize it, let me create some spacing between these elements over here. So now we have, and the way we can do that is with this thing called apply gap spacing to elements. I select the parent container, in this case, row. I, I select this. And now I'm going to select it, apply a gap between all these elements. In this case, I'm going to put a 20. So I'll have a gap. And as you can see, some of these elements have collapsed itself to the bottom because there's not enough space for this fourth element on the right. So I'm going to apply a gap also for the, on the row. So now we have this sort of a you know, layout over here. So now if I do fit right to content, what will have happened is that if I can, if our main canvas was I don't know, a little bigger. So let's say we have our main canvas is 1200. Go back to our, to our container, fit height to content. You can see it's going to try to fit, um, it's going to try to adjust the height based on the content, which in the case is this containers inside. Okay. So going with this same example to highlight other properties, let's say, again, we're still building this little layout over here. We have some spacing on the top and on the left. And the way we do this, if we go back to our main canvas. We got something called at the bottom called padding, and now we can apply some padding. In this case, I'm going to stick with 20, 20, 20, 20. As you can see, now we have some padding inside this container. So again, this is for padding. We have something called some margin. In this case, let's say we still go with that example here in YouTube, and we focus here on the left column. Let's say this is 80 pixels. Let's just say it's 80 pixels. So we can apply a margin of 80 from this container here in the middle. So the way we look. The way that will look like in bubbles, if we go back to your container, if we go and focus on margins, hit 80. Now I can specify a, a, some spacing on the left side, probably 80 is a little too small. It will be 140. So, so yeah, so that's margin. And as you can see, just to kind of reiterate, so just to be clear, margin allows us to put spacing outside of that element. In this case, the element where I have selected is this group. And we, apply, we can apply spacing outside of the element. In this case, 140. But if you want to apply spacing inside the element, which will affect the children, uh, we can do padding. In this case, it's the padding inside this container. Okay, so let's see how this looks like in the responsive tab. As you can see, there's some width over here in this main canvas. That's going to allow us to go and use fully the responsive engine. So let's go ahead and select the CY. That's because we have a mid width of 900. Again, this is something we can play around with. You typically I like to use this, select this 320 as is the minimum width um, of most devices. So if we select 320, now we're able to use this. We can see all the other elements going stacked to the bottom. So hopefully this gives you a review of the new responsive engine. And if you want to see me apply these concepts, check out the course where I built an Instagram clone using this responsive features.